Rare diseases, also known as orphan diseases, affect a relatively small number of people worldwide. They can vary in prevalence between populations, so a disease that is rare in some population may be common in others. Rare diseases affect some 350 million people. They include Guillain-Barré syndrome and achondroplasia, characterized by dwarfism. The rarity and complexity of rare diseases make them difficult to diagnose and even harder to treat. For more insight, I spoke with Dr. Harsha Rajasima, founder and executive chairman of Indo-US Rare. Rare diseases are rare because the, uh, each disease affects fewer than 200,000 people in the United States. That's the definition since the 1983 Orphan Drug Act of US FDA that President Ronald Reagan signed into law. 80% of these uh, diseases are genetic, they, um, uh, and some of these are early onset. About half of the diseases start manifesting early during their developmental uh, life cycle from birth through the first five, five to ten years. And then there are many adult onset diseases that may not, that may already exist in the patient, in the children, but they may not actually manifest those symptoms until later part of their life in their adulthood they are considered late onset diseases. And about half of the rare diseases are late onset. The total number of rare diseases has steadily increased over the last 10 years uh, as the technology for diagnostics, human genome sequencing has been advancing. The total number has now reached 10,867 known named rare diseases. What are some of the hurdles when someone is diagnosed with a rare disease? Essentially, they are left with one of four or five options, right? So first is they, they got diagnosed with a rare disease. Second, uh, whether the disease has a treatment option readily available in the market and can they access it and can they afford it? Uh, do they have insurance? Will the insurance pay for it? Can they afford the out-of-pocket, right? So that's the uh, standard of care uh, for any disease. If, if there is no treatment option, then the patient gets involved uh, or gets referred to a patient advocacy group, which is a hallmark in rare disease. The physicians are not trained in rare diseases, or at least not in most rare diseases, and hence they are not uh, necessarily trained to understand and treat many of these diseases because the diseases are not well understood in the first place. So patients become the experts. In, in those scenarios or the family members and caregivers become the experts. That's the need of the hour is because they are so rare, you, you don't have enough patients in any single country and you, you got to cast the net wide across the globe and hopefully you'll have a few hundred patients that you can identify and connect. And that's where the power of digital technology and the internet can be very critical you mentioned earlier that uh, technological advancement, medical advancement, are enabling more diagnosis for rare diseases. Uh, what about uh, the impact of the environment? Is there a possible link with uh, the environment and the development of rare diseases? And that's a fantastic question, Leonard. Um, there, are, uh, uh, there are three major components of any uh, rare disease uh, causal uh, factors. One is the genetics, the second is the lifestyle, and the third is environment. And so environmental factors often are neglected or not as uh, appreciated. And it's very important to uh, recognize like, you know, allergies due to pollen and seasonal changes or ultraviolet radiation or uh, various other types of uh, environmental factors. Uh, forest fire and many other things that could affect you know each one of these factors might affect uh, different types of disease categories like respiratory or uh, cancers uh, you know there are many forms of cancers that are rare uh, and then there are genetic diseases that may not manifest until they are exposed to certain environmental factors including altitude you know if they are at a very high altitude in on the mountains or if they are in rural and geographic uh, different parts of the country, all these types of environmental factors can uh, have an impact on um, whether even a genetic disease 
will manifest and how severe the symptoms will be. So as you mentioned, global collaboration is important in fighting uh, rare diseases. Now talk to us about uh, Indo-US rare and the steps to foster collaboration. At Indo-US rare, we are addressing these massive health inequities uh, on a global scale, focusing specifically on United States and India and the Indian subcontinent uh, and the Indian diaspora that have migrated over uh, to US and Europe and the rest of the world. Although we are named Indo-US rare, we, we are inclusive uh, and welcoming uh, as, uh, you know, other uh, countries. Um, we have members from multiple other countries also.